What you saw today was the beginning of a sequence of launches. We're starting in six European countries, adding a few more countries later this year, and then introducing a portfolio of products into the U.S. in early 2012. The reason for the sequencing like that is because this is a new program for Nokia. We have to ramp up factories, supply lines, the support for the products, all of the localized customizations, and particular technologies and services that are needed by the consumers in those particular markets. There's no deliberate scheme around buzz or anything like that. The deliberate scheme is around taking quality devices, the first real Windows phone is how we like to describe it, and taking that one consumer to the next, one country to the next, in a way that smoothly ramps up. So that's really our focus. It's worth saying that in any market around the world, increasingly, operators play an important role in bringing your products to market. That's been long true in the U.S., it's true in many other markets like Europe as well. Elements of the N9, the things that really define that, that product, you'll see continue on. The reason we continued with the N9 is, believe, is because we believed we could learn a lot about certain things that actually make the N9 unique in the way that it is. When you look at the Nokia Lumia 800, what you realize is, hmm, that's clearly a refinement of what we learned from the N9. It's a bit different. You can tell them apart. There's a few things that are subtly done differently to improve every aspect of it. But we learned from that. What remains unanswered, and will remain unanswered for today, is when I say elements of the user experience or the cute environment, what does that mean? That's still something you'll see ahead from Nokia. First of all, what we announced in February with Microsoft was a unique relationship. This is not the PC business. It is not a situation where Mar Microsoft has a very large share of the market and is just essentially standardizing. They're looking for innovation and the unique relationship with Nokia, as we demonstrated today when we introduced Nokia Lumia, has specific areas of differentiation. Now, in terms of it doesn't allow for the Sense UI or whatever, I would suggest that one of the biggest challenges facing those other ecos that particular ecosystem, is the fact that there's more and more of that going on. And when I go into the store and look at th what that brand was supposed to stand for, I'm not quite seeing it. it it's as if, you know, there, it's just unclear what the, the standard is for the user experience. And I think that's important. With the introduction of Windows 8, as you recognize that the user experience of Windows 8 is essentially a superset or supercharged version of the Nokia Lumia experience that, that you saw on stage today, and you see the parallels and the opportunity for commonality from a user perspective, you say, wow, this is more than just smartphones. There's a broader opportunity here. And clearly, we see that broader opportunity as well without specifically commenting on what that may mean in the future. It goes beyond that, though, as well, because what you could see at the Microsoft Build Conference is this sense that the development environments also are beginning to head in a common direction. Let a, t a few turns of the crank happen, and you can imagine more and more commonality there. Microsoft placing a bet on HTML5 is another big clue about how all of this may in some way be interrelated over time. So I think it's very interesting what is the definition of the ecosystem. I think it is safe to say it's more than just the phones. It's also important to recognize that it's more than developers and applications, although that's critically important. It's also search, advertising, unified communications like Skype business productivity, gaming, music. It's a whole family. That's what people are buying today. They may not call it that way, but that's the experience they're looking for.